Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Do you need to get a cutout of a portrait with hair strands as in this image? Are you finding traditional tools not doing a good enough job? Well, stick around because in this video, we will be showing you an alternative method of hair strand selection using compound masks, building upon a technique we've employed in previous videos. So let's get right into it. Before we run through the alternative methodology, let's attempt to make the hair selection by relying on traditional methods first. In Affinity Photo, that would primarily be the selection brush and adjustment brush. First, let's select the portrait with the selection brush tool. Now that the selection has been created, let's refine the edges to ensure the selection is more accurate. Click the Refine button. Brush around the edges with the Adjustment Brush. Affinity will reanalyze the selection and attempt to separate the foreground detail from the background. Unfortunately, as you can see here, the performance is disappointing. Despite repeated attempts, including changing all sorts of settings, outlying strands, and small gaps are routinely misidentified as being part of the background and foreground, respectively. It appears that strands are just too tiny to be properly recognized by automated methods, and that is true for every photo editor, not just Affinity. So with traditional tools not working, let's move on to our alternative method using compound masks. Once again, do note that this video builds upon concepts and techniques discussed in two previous videos. To avoid confusion, make sure to watch those first if you have not done so. So let's get on with the process. To get started, the first thing I'll do is to focus primarily on the hair strands. To make the selection easier for Affinity's tools, I'll enhance the contrast of the strands to make it stand out a bit more from the background. I'll duplicate the image. I'll choose the Multiply Blend Mode. There, the strand's contrast is enhanced and now stands out more prominently than before. Next, I'll merge the layers. Right-click on the top layer, click Merge Down. A merged layer is created. With the merged layer selected, use the selection brush or polygonal selection tool to select the main hair strands. There, the strands are nicely selected. Let's create a mask from the selection. Click the Mask Layer button. Click Empty Mask. With the mask selected, paint white on the selections. Let's see how the mask looks like. To view a mask large, control click on the mask thumbnail. There. The mask for the hair strands is looking good. This part is now done, and let's put the mask aside for now and come back to it later. I'll hide the mask and temporarily park it underneath the background image. I'll clean up some of our layers by deleting both the merged layer and the duplicate as this was just used for the purpose of mask creation and is no longer needed. Next, let's begin the process of selecting our portrait. The steps here should be familiar as they are essentially the same as the previous videos on hair selection. With the background image selected, create a compound mask. The compound mask should appear as a sublayer of the background image. Next, create a luminosity range mask. 
drag the luminosity mask inside the compound mask. Manipulate the curve such that the background appears in black and at least the hair edges appear in white. There, that is the best we can do. Unfortunately, the resulting mask is not ideal. The background on the left side of the portrait is not as dark as I would have preferred, and that is primarily due to the lack of contrast between the hair and the background. Luminosity masks work best when there is strong contrast between the subject and background. Not the best result, but let's still work with it anyway. Next, let's enhance the quality of the luminosity mask with a secondary mask. Click the Mask Layer button. Click Empty Mask. Ensure that the empty mask appears as a sublayer of the compound mask and is located at the top of the layer stack. Feel free to drag it to the correct position if that is not the case. Next, let's make a selection of the portrait. To get a better view of our image, I'll hide the compound mask. With the background image selected, use the selection brush to select the portrait. Next, with the empty mask selected, paint white on the selection. There, the portrait is nicely selected. However, the background still needs work. As in the last video, let's use the subtract operator to get rid of the background. Create another empty mask, ensuring once again it appears at the top of the layer stack. Set the operator to subtract. With this mask selected, paint white on the background. Let's add in a background image below the layer stack so we can get a better idea of the mask's quality. There, the mask is looking good, but there are still some errors. With a lower opacity brush, let's get rid of the remaining background around the portrait's hair. As you can see, the result is looking good and is already a vast improvement compared to when using traditional methods. However, we said we didn't want just good, we wanted great strand selections. So how do we further improve it? Well, we improve it by adding in the hair strands mask. Drag the strands mask above the portrait mask but below the background mask. To avoid confusion, since we are using more layers now in our compound mask than in any previous video, I'll name our strands mask to strands and I'll name the background mask to BG for background. Next, I'll unhide the strands mask. Once again, this is what the strands mask looks like. Let's click on the compound mask to see the final result. Here is the result without the strands mask, and here is the result with the strands mask. As you can see, a big difference. Every major strand appears prominently and we achieve this overcoming a subpar luminosity mask caused by the lack of contrast between the hair and background. So I hope you found this video helpful. While we did have to do a lot more work this time, involving no less than four sub-layers inside our compound mask, I hope you agree that the results are worth it. Do let me know if you have other ways of selecting hair strands with Affinity Photo. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.